Hi, this is Elliot Fishman, and welcome to the October 2023 CTSS quiz. I have 10 terrific cases for you, so without further ado, let's get started. In this first case, the most likely diagnosis is, well, if you look at the images, it's really an impressive case. The first thing you see is a large hemopericardium, high-density fluid in the pericardial space. And on the axial images, you have a really hard time defining the uh, aortic root. There's a linear line there. And when you look at it better on the coronal view, you see multiple linear lines. The whole root is irregular. This is a classic type A dissection. Remember, type B dissection is past the left subclavian artery. It's not an intramural hematoma. Yes, there is a hemopericardium present, but the best diagnosis is a type A dissection. The most likely diagnosis in this case is, well, you can see the patient has had a prior aortic valve replacement, but there is low density. It looks like a clot on the aortic valve leaflet. And that's exactly what this is. Now, papillary fibroelastomas are tumors that arise off the aortic valve, but here the valve's been replaced, so that's not the answer. This is not an artifact. I guess the answer is this is an aortic valve failure because it will need to be replaced, but the most precise diagnosis is gonna be clot on the aortic valve. Gated CT scanning, which this is, is a very good way of diagnosing clot on the aortic valve. The most likely diagnosis in this case is, well, you see a very impressive fatty tumor infiltrating the retroperitoneum on the right side. It's pushing the right kidney from right to left. This is surely not an angiomyolipoma of the kidney. Lymphomas are solid, so this is not in the lymphoma category. Lyomyosarcomas are very common retroperitoneal tumors, but they're solid. This is mainly fat density. This is a classic example of a liposarcoma. Liposarcomas often have extensive mass effect, as we see in this case, with displacement of adjacent structures. The mass in the liver is a... Well, you look at the liver image on your right, you see this really bright area of increased attenuation. And you try thinking, is this an infarct? But infarcts are low density. This is the reverse. So it's something with perfusion. What exactly is it? It's not a tumor, right? It's not going to be a lymphoma or hepatoma or metastasis. And then I also show you the chest, and you don't see the SVC, but you see significant collaterals in the mediastinum and the paraspinal region. When you have SVC occlusion, you get flowing of blood through collaterals, and one of the collaterals goes through the dome of the liver, and you get this quote-unquote hot spot in the liver that was described over 40 years ago on nuclear medicine studies when you had SVC occlusion, and again, very nicely shown on the CT exam. The differential diagnosis in this case includes, well, what do I see? I see a posterior mediastinum, solid mass. I don't definitely see any bony involvement, but a neurogenic tumor is going to be considered for sure. Lymphoma, posterior mediastinum, sure, it's a possibility. Castleman's disease is interesting. It can create mediastinal masses, can be solid. Sometimes they enhance, can simulate all sorts of tumors. And in fact, this actually was Castleman's disease, a very unusual case. And so the right diagnosis in this case is D. All of the above are things we should have considered. In this 30-year-old female, the most likely diagnosis is well, what am I seeing? I'm seeing a hypovascular mass. I only have one phase. This is venous phase. There's no significant distortion of the vessels. There's no underlying cirrhosis. Lymphoma can involve the liver, but usually it's multifocal and more solid. Hemangioma has peripheral enhancement. If you said to me this was an atypical hemangioma, I guess I couldn't argue with you. Hepatomas are solid with a regular enhancement, 85% are hypervascular. Hepatic adenomas are typically vascular, but hepatic adenomas can also be relatively hypovascular. They're usually well-defined. 
This is a most unusual case, and this was hepatic adenoma. I have it as the most likely diagnosis, mainly because the other three just wouldn't be the right answer. So this was a very unusual hepatic adenoma. The most likely diagnosis in this case is, well, you see a mass in the mesentery that's partially calcified in the right lower quadrant. There also appears to be, if you look carefully at the coronal image, an area of increased enhancement in the terminal ilium. So lymphoma, usually it's solid masses. Lymphoma, unless treated, doesn't calcify, so I don't like that. Small bowel carcinoma is a thought, but it's hypovascular, so not going to be a good thought. Melanoma, solid usually. Again, typically doesn't calcify, can occur in bowel and can occur in mesentery. But the tumor that's best, mass in the mesentery, if I only saw the mesenteric thing with calcification, I would say carcinoid versus sclerosing mesenteritis, but with the enhancing lesion in the small bowel, you got to go with the carcinoid tumor. And this was a small bowel carcinoid with a mesenteric mass. The most likely diagnosis in this case is, well, you see a mass, it's really in the subcarinal region. It's fluid density and well-defined. And for a treat, I'm giving you a PET scan, and you could see there's no increased PET activity. Lymphoma is always going to be hot on PET, and lymphoma is more solid. This is cystic. Neurofibroma, it could be, but it's usually can be low density, but it's not this low. This is fluid density, and lung cancer just not with this density. Classic location, classic appearance, bronchogenic cysts. And remember, bronchogenic cysts are not positive on PET. Just a very nice example. Now, I will admit you did not need a PET to make the diagnosis, but somehow or other, the patient was worked up for malignancy. The most likely diagnosis in this 30-year-old female is well, what I see is an aggressive vascular tumor in the right lobe of the liver. The liver's a bit enlarged. There's calcifications in the mass and some irregular vascularity. This is surely not the enhancement of hemangioma. It is surely not the enhancement of FNH, which is typically homogeneous, looking like the IVC, can occasionally have a central scar, or commonly has a central scar, but doesn't have calcification, and it's not this appearance. Hepatic adenoma is a thought. Hepatic adenomas can have a range of appearance. They can look very much like hepatoma. They usually don't calcify, but if it bled before, maybe it would calcify. And the fourth choice is fibrolamella HCC. Now, the truth is, when I look at this with the vascularity, the necrosis, the calcification, my first thought would be a hepatoma. Fibrolamella hepatoma, more common in women, younger patients, so here I'm sitting between adenoma and fibrolamella HCC, and with the calcifications, necrosis, I'm going with the fibrolamella HCC, which is the correct answer. The least likely diagnosis of this patient with a large left adrenal mass is, well, what can we think about? This could be a primary ACC, solid, large mass, definitely could be. Usually it's more vascular, but doesn't need to be. Lymphoma is the thought. Now, lymphoma usually when it's primary to the adrenal is bilateral, but it can be unilateral. Metastasis, obviously, smaller, large masses. And in fact, the answer here was a metastatic lung cancer to the adrenal. But metastasis is a good thought. Adenoma. Adenomas can have funny appearances at times. They could have bled. They can look somewhat solid. But in terms of the least likely diagnosis, I think the best answer is D, adenoma. And as I mentioned, this was a primary lung cancer metastatic to the adrenal. So with that, we've done 10 cases. I hope you enjoyed the cases. I hope you learned something. I hope you got them all right. But again, this is a learning experience, so hopefully we've been able to share our experience to help build your experience. And with that, I wish you a great day. If you like this video, make sure to subscribe to the CTSS YouTube channel. You can also visit us at ctss.com for even more videos, plus quizzes, pearls, protocols, and oh so much more. 
We're also in the App Store and have well over a dozen apps for iPhone and iPad, all completely free. Thanks for watching.